Hey everybody, how are you today? So today I want to talk about inspiration or more specifically creating your own inspiration library. I've actually been doing this for years and over the years I've collected a mass quantity of stuff then I've gone through and purged stuff. It's kind of a cycle for me every few years. This year's no different. <laughs> so years ago, I created this just, this is a kid's spiral notebook. I got it, if I'm not mistaken, it was like 25 cents after back to school was done. I probably started this 2005-ish, 2008, somewhere in there. It's This has been hanging around for a while. Um, you don't have to have anything fancy, but I collect articles and images that I don't want to use in collage art or mixed media, but I know at some point I want to reference back to because they've provided inspiration for color, um, pattern, shape, um, something like that. I'm not intending on copying what's in the uh, piece that I've put in here, but I'm using it for inspiration for future artwork. Um, sometimes in the case of articles, for me it's a technique article that I want to reference, something I want to try going forward, and so I have a whole bunch of those too. This is the original one, and depending on what kind of art I'm into at the time really makes a difference about what kind of things I keep in here. Um, I know when I started this I was doing a lot of sewing and I was exploring taking that further and then qu quickly decided I'm, I am I like sewing okay but I don't love it. Um, you'll notice these are just s taped down with regular, regular scotch tape, regular clear tape. Nothing special. They're not glued down. All the edges aren't even taped down. I have things taped over each other. There's a lot of different interesting images in here. Everything from clothing and homes to these bugs that were off of gift wrapping paper. Um, there are, there we go, kitchen cabinet designs that at the time that I liked. Flowers that I liked. It could really be anything. If it's an image I find interesting, that I find inspirational, I stick it into one of these notebooks. Now again, this is the first one. So it literally has a little bit of everything. You can tell towards the back of the notebook, I'm starting to get into painting and color composition more and mixed media. Um, quotes start to make uh, uh, an appearance in here. There are a few quotes. And this is when I got into magazines like cloth, paper, scissors and art journaling and I started discovering mixed media, the joy of vintage images. If I have a vintage image I've gotten to use in mixed media, I frequently don't use the actual image and I make a scanned copy. It's for personal use. All of these are for personal use. They're not for resale. Um, I would never do that. They're all, I'm sure, copyrighted by somebody other than myself. Um, an old photograph I found more vintage images, a vintage Valentine's Day card, and look, then look at these beautiful, beautiful images. Old banknotes. It could be anything. I just, I would randomly stick anything in here. And I think if I'm not mistaken, yeah, there's a few blank pages at the end that I never quite filled up. And I found this when I was cleaning out my closet and my library of existing inspiration images, which were literally, to be honest, all over the place. I had some in big binders, some in little binders, some in photo albums, some just loose. They were just crazy. It was driving me up the wall. So I took all of those images and some new spiral notebooks and I created some new notebooks. Now the original one says design inspiration. It's gonna stay that way, I'm not taking it apart. These new ones are categorized and there's room in there to add. This one's tips and inspiration and this is the one I talked about where I've saved specific articles by other artists that I found interesting that I thought had um, techniques in them or inspirational images in them I found super interesting. I wanted to sit and read at a later date at some point and really study and reference back to. So that's what this is. Think of this as my own personal um, mixed media magazine and that's what I'm creating in this one. So yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, I have one that's just floral and nature images. Some of our pictures I've taken. Again, some are from magazines. They're literally from all over the place. Some could be um, 
from brochures, throwaway items. Um, some have been altered by me in different image software and then printed. And so I have this one. Abstract textures. It's just what it sounds. Color and texture, different patterns I found interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Buddha mermaids and exotics. I had a category of things. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what to call them. So Buddhas, mermaids, and exotics. And my Sharpie started to run out of ink. Can you tell? So, and I just got some Buddha images from a friend that I'm actually going to print and stick in here. But I've got these little Japanese dolls. I've got some Buddha images. Um, I forget what goddess that is, but anyway. So they're in here. Cities and architecture. I really love cities and architecture. And fun fact, I think I hung one of these up. It might be this one. No, it's a different one. I, that one. It's upside down, but that's okay. It's going to stay that way. <laughs> some of these I took. Again, some of them I found in different places. Some of them I altered the original image, and I did actually a painting from this. People. I like to have a reference photo of people to do paintings of people from, not because I'm intending on copy the, copying the photograph or in some cases having it look anything like the person in the photo, but I'm using it as reference for shadow and light. Um, so I have lots of different people in here, including this is my dad, his high school picture, 1957. <laughs> um, myself, that's an altered, that, again, altered with an image app. There's That's me again. My Uncle Aldo, different people, Mother Teresa, different people, Frida Kahlo, that's my daughter Rebecca, my mom, that's my Uncle Aldo and his wife Marcella, my Aunt Marcella, and just anybody really with an interesting beautiful face, and especially a photograph with interesting lighting, they go in here, and it's not just face shots, there are full body shots in here, see there you go, if I find one that's interesting, um, body positions. This is one actually I've referenced the body positions in this a number of times, especially this one. So I taped the whole thing in. I taped down the part of it I never use and saved the whole thing and made a tip out. I have one that's animals and insects. Some pets I knew in real life before they passed and some just images I found in magazines and things. Some pictures I took, some other people took. And then landscape. And so these can all sit on my shelf. And at some point I may tag um, or hang a tag off of the um, spiral binding um, so that when they're sitting on the shelf like this I can just see what it says. I'm not going to do that right now. But I may at some point. So this is the tips and inspiration one. And how I do these, these are, you know, again, magazine articles. So these are a bit trickier than the other ones. You know, it's a magazine. So it's printed on both sides, right? You can't, there's probably a different way to do this than what the way I'm going to do it. But um, I think my way is pretty easy. So um, I take the magazine article after I ripped it out over to my local copy shop and I make copies of the magazine of at least one side. And in this case, I really loved the color. So I copied the pictures of the little houses in color. And then I copied the actual pattern part of the magazine in black and white. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly... So I have the actual magazine here, and this is the copy. So I'm going to tape... That's my husband's computer, if you guys can hear that. I'm going to take the actual piece I copied. Making sure to, yeah, just grab one piece of paper. I'm going to tape that down. Then I'm going to take, I copied that side, right? So that means I can use this side to tape down. I don't want to lose any part of the article, whether it's the inspiration images or the directions. I'm 
I'm trimming it a little bit so that it fits better in the notebook and also just eliminating some of the waste that I really don't need to reference the article. And again, I'm just using regular scotch tape, regular, what do they call it, cello tape? Is that what you call it? Clear, plain tape. Yeah? So I'm going to do that through the whole article, and I'll be back in just in a minute, in just a minute, and show you guys how I did this. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so for this article, as I said, I copied one side of all the pages so that I could paste that in, the copy in, and then on the other side use the actual article, and I didn't lose any of the images. The front uh, part of this article where they showed all the houses the different people made, I really didn't want to lose any of the color part of the article. Sometimes I print them in black and white um, when, you know, the particular image, it's okay if I don't have it in color because I've got all this other color inspiration from the same article over here. Um, but in this case, I didn't really want to use lose the color, so I printed it so that I would have the original color on both sides. And these are all the houses people made. And then the actual article is here with a copy of the pattern. Now, part of the process of looking at this, I remember I found this other pattern for a similar place. Um, on the internet, so I printed it too, and then I taped it in, but I made a second copy of both of these and put it in an envelope here in the back, so I actually at some point can take this out and use this as the pattern, and I plan on making a hard copy of the pattern, and I can put the hard copy in here. Um, and this is just going to be my own like mixed media um, catalog. And before anybody asks, these articles are from all over the place. Cloth-based paper scissors, art journaling. Um, this particular house one is from cloth paper scissors in 2011. And I only know that because it was on the bottom of one of the pages when I was trimming the pages. Um, May, June 2011. <laughs> so anyway... So th that's my idea, what to do with your inspiration images. Make yourself some ins unique to you inspiration books to keep in your art room. Um, rather than keeping the whole magazine, just tear out the parts that appeal to you. Take the rest of it and fish for collage images and recycle the rest, honestly. That's it for today. Don't forget to check out the video description for any relevant links, including the link to my link tree, uh, which is down there, and it if you click on it, it's going to take you to every sing a, a list of every single place you can find me on the internet, including my tip jar, my Amazon wish list, my Etsy shop, my website, everything. So click on it and check me out. That's it. Leave a comment or a question. I'd be happy to answer and respond. Don't forget the most important thing. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.